Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about decoding vector databases, especially for Salesforce professionals. The guys who are working on AI and machine learning domain, they must be pretty familiar and aware of this term already. So if you move ahead, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude and thanks to Apex Hours community. They are very consistently creating a lot of Salesforce content, primarily in form of videos, apart from blogs. And so far, I think they have created above 500 videos. This number was the last time when I checked their YouTube channel. And it's six years uh, in making and led by Amit Chaudhary. So it's an initiative by community for community doing amazing work. So I cannot uh, go ahead without thanking them. So big thanks to all of them. And recently, they touched a big milestone, 101K subscriber, which is, I think, huge, especially in Salesforce ecosystem, which is a niche cloud computing topic. Now moving ahead. To a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm like a, a pure IT guy, still a programmer and developer hat. Everybody says that, but I'm still I am. I started my career in Java in 2004. Before that, I used to work in uh, uh, Visual Basic and Visual C++ and all those uh, classic languages. And uh, in 2009, Salesforce uh, happened to me. I started uh, writing open source code, creating blogs. Uh, and a lot of stuff around uh, Salesforce and somehow Salesforce recognized me and awarded me MVP title, which I renewed for eight years. And then I founded Concrete.io, my Salesforce consultancy based in India in 2013. Now coming to the core topic, uh, why we are talking about vector databases. So I would like to take you to this uh, news article from Salesforce. They basically, uh, said in uh, December 14, 2023, that a new vector database is now going to be embedded into Salesforce Data Cloud and it will do a lot of stuff, which is good. You can read all about it. There are amazing videos. You should watch, you should, sorry, watch them. Now coming to the interesting part, the part I like is this video is very good. You should definitely watch it. It's interesting. More interesting was this image. Let me open it in a new tab in a zoomed out fashion. I was trying to understand the flow. OK, user request is coming. We are doing some embedding. There are some uh, array like structures getting created, which confused me a bit. Then I saw Copilot coming in. Then this was going into data cloud vector database. So this is unstructured data, embed tables, and then these are numbers. So that's where I was getting confused. And I thought, let me dig, uh, take a deep dive or dig deep into this whole uh, concept and that's where the whole uh, research started and this presentation is mainly to give you clarity uh, about this vector database because I truly believe as a technical person that you should uh, be able to understand uh, and the underlying principles and technology behind everything Salesforce is doing at times also because uh, Salesforce is known for making things easy but we should also know what vector database and how it works it's interesting actually not a boring topic. I'm, I'm sure you will enjoy. So coming to the core presentation, I already covered the why. We already talked about this announcement. Now, the first question which comes into mind is what is vector? Vector database, vector embedding, what is vector? So vector is just simple sequence of number. This is a vector. This is a little bigger dimensional vector. This is another vector. This is another larger vector or larger sequence of numbers. So these are all vectors. So now why these vectors are important? <coughs> so that's where vector embeddings come into play. So these are basically vectors with some sensible numbers where every number could represent a sentiment, a context, or some nuances that can be useful for a data analysis or that is coming from a data analysis. We'll see more on that uh, later on. I will not go by the uh, definition. You will understand what uh, vector embedding is and how it is deriving itself from the vector thing. So how they are created, like uh, typically we have uh, unstructured data as Salesforce claimed it and everybody says it, that there is unstructured data, which is text, not a normal text, like first name, last name. It is a huge text and images, they can be as huge as you can imagine. And videos are known to be huge, sound files. So these kind of text is unstructured because they don't fit in the relational databases easily. <laughs> so these are converted into vectors. I'm not calling them embeddings right now. I'm just calling them vector into array of numbers. And now every part of the number, it represents a feature, uh, 
uh, basically an uh, quality of uh, that picture or the video or some special thing about uh, that thing which we'll see later on so for example if we talk about images so a number might represent pixel intensity uh, another number might represent if it's a human or it's an animal and the third might represent it's a photography or it's a painting or it's what kind of picture it is so similarly there can be multiple numbers in a uh, vector and each number can represent a different thing now why vectors are important so as i said traditional rdbms or traditional databases other types also they cannot do similar kind of searches on text audio and images you can at times store text and audio into traditional databases also but you cannot find similar uh, audio similar video you can do similar search if you are putting a metadata on a audio like this is a song by let's say jennifer lopez so it will find all the songs by jennifer lopez but what beyond that what kind of tone it is how you will describe it and all those kind of different different parameters on which you can categorize an audio so that's where this complex data uh basically creates a need for vector databases and vector embeddings because these are now converted into vector embeddings and that's where vector databases comes into play because they are optimized for a quick search on this kind of complex data we'll see more how we'll not go uh, too deep here so before i talk a lot about uh, vector databases and things let's see some simple vectors of vector embeddings like the classic case is customer feedback so here you see three forms of feedback one is good like i love the quick response he's happy or she is happy this guy is also happy it's saying that uh, the support team was very helpful and prompt very nice now this person is unhappy i am unhappy with the slow response uh, time <coughs> sorry so now what we see is if you notice these vectors which are generated for these uh, different different customer responses so these are somewhat similar these numbers are similar these numbers are similar but if you see these are quite different and quite far like this is positive this is negative this is negative this is positive this is positive this is negative so on a glance you can guess that this is not uh, same there are some difference because this is the only negative feedback these two are somewhat similar positive feedback let's see more in the next slide so if we see the first part Uh, of the overall customer feedback vector so we are breaking the vector here and uh, the first part represents the overall sentiment the positive value actually gives an idea that it's a positive feedback negative shows that it's a negative feedback so if i just quickly go back so positive positive negative means it's a negative feedback now the second is actually capturing the intensity that how intense it is uh, actually so this means uh, that uh, there is a different level of intensity on positive side and this is an highly negative uh, in that way same is the third one the service aspect which means that uh, if we have a positive remark on a response time then it might be uh, like on a higher positive side of number and negative minus 48 signifies dissatisfaction so this guy was upset about response time so this went negative so this has prompt this is prompt so this is on a positive side going ahead we already talked about vector databases so now this is a simplistic example where we are just talking about customer feedback you will see a more complex about uh, complex example about movies coming next so vector databases are basically a storage for these kind of high dimensional vectors and then they offer a quick search so that you can find nearby vectors or similar vectors in a ranked order of similarity very easily so that you can do uh, matching and comparisons and all those of those sort of things which you are familiar or you are doing already in your traditional databases so i i will go to a little advanced example now to make more sense out of this whole uh, conversation so what we did is uh, this is a uh, movies uh, or hollywood data and uh, you all must be using netflix uh, or amazon prime or hbo or disney uh, in some uh, form or other like on mobile or your laptop or ipad 
So typically, whenever you search for a movie, they all are suggesting similar movies because at times, let's say if I search for Inception, you might not have Inception, let's say on Netflix, but you might see similar movie suggestions to Inception on Netflix. So how quickly they are doing that because they have not uh, decoded the whole video. How How is that happening? Same is for uh, the mo other things. Like even if you go on Spotify, you find similar sort of things happening. Like you put a uh, album name or a singer's name, even if the song is not there on Spotify, they, you will get a similar suggestion that you might like to listen that. So now if we break uh, this data from vector databases, so as of now for simplicity, I have just kept uh, four categories in which we can uh, like evaluate or categorize a movie like Inception, what's the genre, genre is sci-fi sci thriller, director, plot summary, an average rating possibly from IMDb. Same is for Godfather, it's a crime drama and uh, this movie. I will not go into detail, you can read it yourself easily. So this is a high level classification, let's go next. So now we are trying to find embeddings. So embeddings uh, is first based on genre. So one embedding will create like one embedding means one array will create for genre and then another one will create for cast and director. The third one will be for plot and theme because uh, sometimes the theme and plot is similar. So you would like to see similar movies based on that plot. And at times user ratings and reviews are also important. So they generally capture a high level public sentiment about the movie. And genre goes without saying that uh, people sometimes like action movies only or some people like romantic movies only. So this is a good category to classify a movie on. So now if we see the sample embeddings, these might, might not be accurate. I've just done some uh, basic uh, conversions. So if we talk about uh, Inception, so the genre one came one here for uh, uh, this vector embedding. The one is here in the first uh, block, but if you see Titanic, it is going here because it's a romantic movie and it's a different kind of thing with Godfather for obvious reasons. Same is for director Nolan. This is uh, like uh, embedding for Nolan. This is for Titanic's director. This is for uh, Godfather. Same is for plot it is little more complex because it's a long text and rating as of now we have kept as simplest because it's just simply a single dimensional uh, array which donates the rating like whatever it is on imdb all right so let's keep moving ahead so now let's say we have uh, our embeddings ready so the next obvious question which comes to the mind is uh, how does the querying process or the whole movie recommendation engine uh, basically uh, works. So first of all, all the movies, whatever we are talking about, all these embeddings, these are just four simple criteria. There will be many embeddings, I'm sure, in Netflix created for each movie so that they can be very particular in their suggestions. But as of now, let's assume that all these four embeddings are stored into the vector database because it stores the numbers. Now, just to go a little bit in flashback, now you will see how these numbers are making sense, why Salesforce has shown you these kind of arrays all around. These are numerical arrays. So now if we go back and talk about the querying process, so first of all, we already said that all these embeddings are stored in database. Now, whenever a user searches for a movie or it puts a director name, so we create an embedding based on that movie name or uh, basically director name and it's called a query vector. Then what this database can do is basically based on that query vector, it can find similar uh, vectors or similar uh, movies and it can also rank them based on the similarity. So now based on that ranking, you can sort that result and show that result. So that's how Netflix and those all systems, they are showing you a ranked set of movies based on the most uh, or the closest similarity to a given movie or the query which you have entered in the system. If you want to see a visual representation, so this is how the storing works. You can take any data, we are talking about movies. So they are first transformed into embeddings. It can be multiple of them for a single movie. They go into the vector database. This is the querying part. Like let's say somebody asked for inception as a movie. So inception will be again converted into embedding just like the same way in which we are storing them. 
the vector database will now take all these vectors or vector embeddings and will try finding movies similar to this given embedding by the ranked similarity score and then you will see multiple results like this all right so now if we take the same thing if he, somebody is searching for X inception we will generate an embedding will uh, basically pass it to the vector database now vector database might result dark knight because it's uh, directed by christopher nolan and it has a similar complex plot based on the similarity score or it might also get memento for the obvious reasons because they have the same uh, plot complexity and other similarities now let's take a deep dive we understood how the customer feedback simple data looks like how we have four categories of embedding for a simple example like of Netflix movies and those kind of things. But if he, one wants to take more uh, deep dive, there can be multiple embeddings for a movie like based on the cast, like what are the characters and uh, what are, is the story theme around that character? How is the dialogue writing like? How is the cinematography like? What is the short composition, color grading? soundtrack and score is can generate a good embedding cultural context is important like this movie is shot in india mexico china which part of the world and then the sixth one is very interesting like how you are bringing the social media data into the embedding like how people are appreciating or talking about that movie in uh, social media box office performance is uh, definitely there last one is something which i definitely do at times i just try to find the oscar nominated or oscar awarded movies so it is a good way to find similar movies uh, uh, in netflix or any other system they all support these kind of searches now coming to uh, salesforce so why salesforce is doing this we don't have videos and those sort of things we do have to some extent in salesforce but uh, why is Salesforce uh, going for vector database? So let's see what a structured data Salesforce has. So structured data, we all know. Structured data is typical traditional database rows and columns. Unstructured, we already understood so far. It's text, image, video, audio, and those kind of data. And by text, I mean the whole huge text. So we have customer support tickets as an example in Salesforce. They have a lot of rich information and they are huge text with a lot of uh, mix of structured and unstructured data, which is a good fit for vector database. Email is known for going huge. It can have a lot of attachments and a lot of uh, threading uh, of uh, conversation. Chat transcripts, all are good example of textual data. Social media post again can go crazy lengthy and it has a uh, lot of sentiment and a lot of things inside them, just like the other things. Sales call transcripts, again, it can be uh, audio uh, version of uh, your uh, uh, data in which you are putting the sales call recordings into the system marketing material again it can be image video text pdf whatever you want a complex binary object so you might want to categorize that the sixth category and then product reviews and feedback they are definitely stored in salesforce and uh, can help commerce cloud customers a lot and then knowledge articles and forum discussions, again, a huge textual kind of information. So all these things, if they are into vector databases, now you can do a lot of similarity and a lot of smart searching around that whole thing, which is typically not possible if we take the traditional database into the picture. So with that being said, the data cloud vector database is built on Einstein platform and it is going to bring all the vector database power to the workflows, analytics and automation and it will also power the Einstein co-pilot search and it's claimed to be going live on February 2024 so keep your alerts on on Salesforce announcements to know more. With that being said, that's all I had for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Follow Apex Hours for more detail and drop your comments for any questions and thoughts on this video. Thank you.